All right, everyone. So as we get started with our yoga class this morning, I want to just remind everyone that this is absolutely your class. This is your time to unwind, to relax, to stretch, to unplug, whatever it might be that got you to come to our class this morning. I want you to notice that. Sometimes it's for people to just stretch, right? You want to you want to get more flexible. Sometimes it's because you may have a lot of stuff going on in your world right now and you know you just need to have a moment of self-care. That breathing, that relaxing, that focusing, finding clarity. And for others, perhaps we're feeling some muscle aches and we're really hoping that we can kind of work through some of those muscle aches today. So I want you to be true to yourself for a moment, reflect on why you're in class this morning, what it is that you're really hoping to accomplish, knowing that maybe the answer is just, I like yoga, I wanted to do yoga this morning. It's what I do every Saturday morning. So take that moment, and this is called um, intention. So becoming aware of what your intention is this morning as we're laying in Shavasana, flat on our back. Our knees can either be bent, preferably legs are straight, and just allow those legs to relax. Same with our arms. Just let those arms come down on either side of our body, palms raised up towards the ceiling. Otherwise, you can rest them on your heart and your stomach, feeling the beating of your chest, the rise and fall of your, your stomach as you take those big breaths in. And with that being said, becoming more aware of our breathing today. Nothing too forceful, nothing too programmed. Noticing simply that inhale and noticing our exhale. Thinking of that happiness flooding our body as we breathe in and thinking of how soft we can feel we breathe out and we'll just spend a couple more moments on that breathing and if we're really fidgety today if we're kind of wandering all over the place let's see if we can settle that down notice what's got us thinking what's got us fidgeting and just try to set that aside as we take a couple full complete breaths And with our next inhale, I'm going to ask us to take that big stretch, reaching those arms all the way up over our head. Where do the arms go today? Do we want to have our arms straight or bent? Do they reach the ground or are they up a little bit? How does that feel through the shoulders, the back, the ribs? One more breath cycle. And we can release our arms, gathering the knees into our chest. Go ahead and give yourself a big hug. Today's focus in terms of what we're working on in our body is our lower back and our hips. And this knees to chest position, although it feels so easy, is so effective in just starting to activate or starting to bring awareness to those low backs where they meet the hips. If you haven't started already, we can incorporate that side to side rock. Little massage. Sometimes it feels like we're kneading out those lower back muscles, any knots. And then as we hold the knees still, draw them a little bit tighter towards the chest, you can roll the ankles, getting rid of any cricks and cracks, loosening up through those feet, Preparing for that single leg stretch. We'll keep a hold of our right knee, extending the left leg down long on the floor if you're able to, lengthening through that left hip as we open the right knee out towards the right shoulder slightly. Again, a very basic stretch, but something that 
helps us understand how our body feels right now at this moment. Notice what you're feeling. We draw the knee over towards the left shoulder. Continuing to drive the thigh in towards the belly. Any stretch through that outer hip. And then we'll bring that leg back in and release down. Taking the left knee in now. When you're ready, opening the knee out towards that left shoulder. Now we're trying to press the right leg down into the mat. Just notice how it feels as we open up across that left hip. And then we can bring the knee over towards the right shoulder. Now the focus localizes into the left outer hip. Bringing the leg through the middle and release down. Taking our time, bringing our feet flat on the floor, preparing for our glute bridges. Feet our hips width distance apart, maintaining knees, hips width distance apart as well. Arms down by our sides. Go ahead and roll those shoulders into the mat as we activate our abdominal muscles. Inhale, press through the feet as we lift the hips up. And exhale, slowly lower down. We'll do this a few times. Inhale, lift the hips up. Exhale, down. Working our core. Inhale, lift, activating those glutes. Exhale, lower. Two more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down. And inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower. At this point, we're going to take our figure four stretch. Taking that right leg up, cross the ankle over your left thigh, allowing that right knee to open. You can press the knee away gently. Maybe that feels really nice. And we're just going to stay here and take a couple deep breaths. Otherwise, hands thread under left thigh, picking the legs up. Trying to keep our backs flat on the floor. That knee is pushing away and open from the face. And just watch if you're feeling very twisty or tilted. We wanna to try to keep our backs flat, those hips level. One more inhale. And exhale, release the feet to the ground. And whenever you're ready, We'll cross that left ankle over. Allow the knee to open. So right away, if you just feel like your hips have collapsed, try to straighten that out. It makes for a much more effective stretch. We can press the knee away or thread the hands under. And if you're threading the hands under and your feet are all straight and you're rigid, just try to relax that right leg. Keep those shoulders pressing down into the mat. The focus is on that bent left leg along the outer thigh into that left hip. And release the legs down. Taking our arms out to the side, activate your abdominal muscles again, roll the shoulders into the mat, preparing for some windshield wipers. We'll lift our knees up 90 degrees. Keeping everything on the ground except for those legs, we take an inhale in the center. Exhale, lower the legs towards the right. They don't have to come all the way down. Inhale, lift up, control. Exhale, lower to the left. So it's not a drop, they don't fall. Inhale, lift, control. Exhale, lower into the right. Keep both shoulders on the mat. Inhale, lift, use those obliques. Exhale to the left. Feeling this through the spine. Inhale, lift. Exhale to the right. Inhale, lift up. Exhale to the left. Inhale, lift. We do one more each side. Exhale to the right. Inhale, lift. One last time, exhale to the left. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, release the feet down. Slowly working our way up and over onto hands and knees. 
Now on hands and knees, we'll take hands directly beneath shoulders, knees underneath hips, bellies in, backs nice and flat. And just watch our shoulders that we're not leaning into them. We really wanna to try to push away from those hands, pressing our shoulders up towards the ceiling. Activate those strong muscles in the back. Finding our spinal balance will extend that right arm forward, thumb to the ceiling, and press our left leg back behind us. Lowering down. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhale, lower. Inhale, right. Exhale. Inhale, left. Exhale. Inhale, right. Exhale. Inhale, left. Exhale. Inhale, right. Exhale. Inhale, left. Exhale, on this next one, we're holding it. Right arm, left leg extend. Coming into our songbird. Crunch elbow and knee underneath, rounding the back. And inhale, extend, belly's tight. Exhale, crunch. Inhale, extend. Exhale. Inhale, long. Exhale. Inhale, one more. Exhale. Inhale, open. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, left arm, right leg, extend. And crunch. Inhale, open. Exhale, round the backs. Inhale, belly's tight as we extend. Exhale. Inhale, open. Exhale. Inhale, open one more. Exhale. Inhale, open. And release. Holding table. Let's find those cows and cats. Inhale, open the chest, look forward. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, round the back. Inhale, open. Really articulating through the spine, lift tall through crown of head. Exhale, round. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. And one more. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. Pressing back into child's pose when you're able to. Sinking those hips low, extending the arms and resting the forehead. And just taking a moment here, I want us to take a few really nice, slow, deep breaths. Checking in what's going on through the ankles, the knees, the hips. Take a couple of breaths. Now let's stretch those shoulders, threading the right arm underneath the left. You can lay into that right ear. Notice if we're feeling any stretch through that right shoulder blade, the arm, through the upper back. Coming through the middle. Take the left arm under instead and lay into that left ear. Nice, slow, deep breath. Coming through the middle and up. From our tabletop position, we're going to take our runner's lunge. First, we step our right foot all the way up between our hands. Knee stacked right on top of ankle. When you're able to, or if you choose to, let's lift up, bring the bellies in. So in runner's lunge, we don't want this position happening of the back where we're leaning forward. We want to neutralize the pelvis and the spine, draw the bellies in and just lean with the knee. From here, we lift our arms up, Shoulders come down. Remember, heart center is an option for anyone taking extra care of shoulders today. We're stretching through that left hip flexor. Opening up, thinking if you've been sitting at a desk a lot this week or you're sitting down, your hips can get really tight, which causes your back to get 
very um, sway. I'm trying to show you the sway position. Just pull those bellies in. Keep stretching that hip flexor. Prepare for a stretch of the hamstring. We'll take our hands to our hips. Extend that front leg and draw the toe up. Now from here, we wanna just start sitting back through the hip as we bring the chest forward. Some of us will stay quite high today as we target the thigh. Some of us might be able to come down with the hand knowing that's not an expectation and that's not required. As we continue to stretch through that hamstring, I want you to play with the position of your foot a little bit. So you can point the foot and then you can draw the foot up. And sometimes that changes what we're feeling. Just making sure we're not leaning into your hands. Very good, everybody. And then rock forward into that lunge. Hands are on the ground. We'll sweep the knee back behind us and rest in child's pose for a moment. Just sitting into the hips, extending those arms and resting the forehead. You know, everybody take a body scan as we're in child's pose. How do you feel? Slowly coming back up into table so that we can repeat that on the other side. We start with sweeping our left leg forward, help the knee get straight up above the ankle. Decide if you're leaving your hands down today or if you're lifting them up. I noticed that I was a little twisted and tilted, so I'm just going to take an extra moment here, correcting for that. As we reach our arm nice and tall, let's draw the shoulder blades down our back, and maybe just bend a little bit forward, really opening up through that right hip flexor this time. Anyone who's interested can close their eyes, really internalizing our practice and our focus, paying attention to your breathing. Good balance. One more inhale here. Taking those hands down, let's Carefully shift our weight back into our right shin. Square off that foot as we hinge forward over our left leg. Now your left leg may be different than the right. Perhaps the right side, your hands were on the ground. And now on this side, my left leg feels just a little bit tighter today. So I'm just going to take my time breathing into it. Remember in yoga, we have no expectations. We don't assume our stretch is going to look or feel a certain way. Instead, when we enter the stretch, we listen to the body, we breathe into it, we modify how we're holding it to make sure that we're holding the right version of the pose today. There's no competition and there is absolutely no judgment. We're experiencing it, we're enjoying it, we're learning. And if you haven't already, you can start pedaling that foot forward and back. See if that changes the stretch at all for you on this side. Nice flat back, belly's in. We're releasing the left leg now. We'll come forward and sweep the leg back coming into child's pose again. Take a couple of breaths as we hold this very relaxing pose. Notice what you're feeling. Personally, I'm experiencing a lot through my upper back and my shoulders at this moment. We'll come into down dog next. So if you're choosing not to do down dog today, staying in child's pose, otherwise joining me by curling the toes under yourself and lifting those hips up nice and high. Pressing away from those hands, strong backs, bellies drying in. We just look back at those feet. Feel free to shake your head no, releasing the neck. We'll nod the head yes. 
and then continuing to look at the feet, pull those shoulders down our backs and let's start pedaling right to left foot, toe to heel. Again, working through the calf muscles, encouraging blood flow through the feet. Now just holding down dog. Try to press those heels down, lift the tailbone up a little higher. Press the chest back between their shoulders towards the knees. Notice how that feels through the back, the shoulders. We'll come all the way forward into a plank pose. Remember, we can take our knees to the ground when we're in plank as we slow lower, chaturanga to the mat. And now squeeze your shoulders, lift up into cobra. Maybe just starting in baby cobra, working our way through to a bigger cobra throughout the class. And then release the chest and press back either into down dog or child's pose. We're going to do that flow two more times. Inhaling forward into plank. Exhale, slow lower, elbows brushing ribs. Inhale, lifting up for cobra. Exhale, pressing back down dog or child. One more time, inhaling forward. Exhale, slow lower. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, press back. Now from here, we're going to look up between our hands, stepping our right foot forward into a lunge. Take that right foot so that the knee is above the ankle. You may have to help it get there a little bit. Now, placing that left foot on the ground completely, we're opening up into a warrior two. So the arms come to the long edge of your mat and we bend into our right knee. Holding that warrior two, still facing the long edge of the mat, we're going to get ready to come into our triangle pose. We straighten out our right leg, reach forward through that right arm, and then when there's nowhere left to go, we allow the arms to switch. So now the arms are running perpendicular to the floor, straight up and down from floor to ceiling. If anyone's shoulder is bothering them, you can take the hand to your hip or lower back pocket. What the triangle pose works is it's stretching through that right groin all the way up through the hips. And we're working the obliques, the glutes, and those shoulders. Slowly softening the knee, coming back into warrior two. Go ahead and spiral all the way through lunge for me. That can take some balance. Sweep back through plank. From plank, we're going to take our chaturanga again. Slow, lower all the way down to the mat. Lifting up into cobra. Nicely done. Pressing back into down dog or child, which will hold for a couple of breaths. Loving this stretch. Good, see how straight your legs are or if they need to be a little bit more bent today. Preparing to repeat this lovely series on the left side. We'll look up between our hands as we kick our left foot forward, helping that knee get right on top of ankle. Slowly transition that back foot so that it's all the way on the ground. Mine's a little bit turned out. And we reach our arms open into warrior two. <sighs> Amazing. Bending into warrior two, remember we wanna keep hips, shoulders, and knees back. Arms incredibly strong. Holding that left knee bent for the moment, preparing for triangle. Let's straighten out that leg, reach forward over that left leg, and then switch our arms, running up and down making sure we're never leaning into our hand, we're never sinking. Now the stretch is through the left groin, strengthening through those right obliques, the shoulders, and squeeze those glutes for extra support. Softening our knee, inhale, lift up through warrior two. Balance as we waterfall, exhale down through lunge. Step back into plank, working on those graceful transitions, preparing for our chaturanga. That slow lower down, 
Inhale, lifting up through Cobra. Pressing back into Down Dog or Child's Pose. Again, just enjoy this stretch for the simple sake of what happens when we're holding this stretch. What is it? Is it a moment of relief? Is it an amazing stretch? Is it just a break? What is it to you today? Slowly coming forward into plank. And now this time we're lowering onto our stomach to stay. You can take your hands down by your sides and just take a moment, a few big breaths. Feeling as your diaphragm works, the lungs expand, the stomach press down into the ground. And then notice when we exhale, we're just melting into the mat. From here, we're coming into our lotus or locust pose. Locust is our Superman. I'll ask us to bring our nose to the floor, bring our legs close together, reach our arms back behind us so palms face in towards the body. Now squeeze your belly buttons, activate those abdominal muscles. That's gonna help straighten out your back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together as we lift our chest up. Now reach your arms back, squeezing those shoulder blades even more and see if you're able to lift your legs up as well. Nice neutral necks, a long extension of the spine. Keep those arms squeezing down our backs, reach those fingers towards your toes. Belly's pulled in nice and tight, squeeze your glutes, point your toes, hold in your locus, strengthening those erector spinae muscles, the big long back muscles. One more big inhale and exhale, release. You can lay on your other ear, Balance out that rotation of the neck. Relax completely with your arms, legs, and belly. And then slowly bring your nose towards the ground again as we take our hands under our shoulders or back into the ribs for our cobra. See if we can get up just a little bit higher off of those hips and press back into down dog or child's pose when you're able to. Feel free to wiggle your hips or pedal from right to left. Preparing to come into our pigeon pose. Pigeon is next. There's lots of ways to get into it. You can choose your own way, otherwise follow along as we lift our right leg up to three-legged dog. And then step that foot all the way forward towards your left hand, letting your knee come to the right hand. And as we bring our shin towards parallel with the front edge of the mat, we'll now let that left leg come back towards parallel with the long edge of the mat. Double check for me if you're able to, that your hips are level, they're square, and you're resting on your knees and feet. And you can come onto your hands, your arms, or I like to make fists turn into pillows. Now, personally, I'm experiencing a lot of sensation in this right hip. So I'm going to take a few moments and focus on my breathing. Nice, slow, long, complete breaths. Trying to keep my parasympathetic nervous system. That's our rest and digest nervous system primarily active and that allows my sympathetic nervous system that fight or flight response that we feel when we're really stressed out or scared to keep itself calm to not turn on Slowly, we'll come back up onto our hands. Now you can stay here with me and join me in King Pigeon. Otherwise, feel free to go into Child's Pose or Down Dog right away. If you're going to do King Pigeon, we'll lift up onto the hands a little bit more. See if you're able to bend that left knee 
And then with your left hand, so same hand as foot, try to grab onto that ankle or foot. An amazing stretch for that left quadricep, the thigh and running into the hip. And if anyone's able to lift that front right arm, you can lift it up to the ceiling, holding our king pigeon. Really great stretch for that left hip while working through that right. And if we're enjoying child's pose or down dog, we will be with you in just a moment. Take one more inhale. Exhale, release the hands, release the foot, and step back into down dog or child's pose to join our friends. Again, feel free to wiggle the hips or pedal the feet, or just hold down dog or child's pose still. Preparing to repeat that sequence on the left side. Taking your left leg up, three-legged dog. Exhale, sweep the foot forward towards right hand. Knee comes down towards left. And we press that right leg back behind us. Go ahead and check over that right shoulder to make sure it hasn't wandered and you want your shoelaces on the ground. Don't allow that foot to wander. From here, I like to check my balance, make sure my hips are level. You know that um, the ruler contractors use? See if the yellow bubble would be middle or if it's really tilted. And then if you're able to, let's come down onto our elbows or maybe fists into pillows. Now same thing, are you immediately trying to hold your breath? Are you tight? Are you defensive? Or are we able to stretch into this left hip? Try to relax, slow deep breath. If you find your mind wandering, focus on your breathing, breathing into your left hip. Really helps send the blood flow there. We'll take our time coming up onto the hands. And again, the option will be there for those of you who'd rather come back to your child's pose or down dog to do that now. If you'd like to join me in King Pigeon, we lift up a little higher on our hands. Try to bend that right knee. And then with your right hand, go ahead and grab a hold of that ankle, foot, pant leg, whatever you're able to reach. Keeping hips and shoulders square, perhaps you're able to lift that left arm up. Nice big stretch for that right side as we continue to work through that left hip. one more big inhale exhale release and we'll join our friends back in down dog or child's pose feeling all the feels right now let's take another body scan notice what you're feeling if you're in down dog just play play with what it is notice what feels good if you're in child's pose enjoy that stretch And now everyone together, we're going to come through tabletop position and sweep our legs around to the front, sitting tall in staff. <sighs> Very nice. All right, everybody. So we are going to go through a half Lord of the Fishes pose sitting down before coming down to our mats to finish our practice today. So with that being said, a little bit of following along and a little bit of manipulation through the legs. We'll start by taking our legs, just clear your canvas. So just clear the canvas. The legs are just out to the side so that we can work through this a little bit better. We'll start by taking that right foot into a butterfly, trying to point the right knee straight to the front. So see how I've turned my body just a little bit so that my right knee is pointing straight to the front. So it's kind of a turned butterfly. Then this left leg, I want you to cross the foot on the outside of your right thigh. Now I'm sitting with my right heel nice and close to my bum, right kneecap pointing forward, left foot directly beside the knee. Now here's the thing, try to get that left hip down to the floor. If that left hip isn't on the ground, what I want you to do instead is take that right leg 
and bring it out front. So now the right leg is front. And maybe if your foot isn't flat on the floor, that left foot, you can bring it here. So now we're just setting ourselves up for a seated spinal twist. So taking seated spinal twist or right foot tucks under and left leg is on the outside. Left foot is flat, knee up to the ceiling. Right foot is touching the bum, bum cheeks on the ground, right knee pointing towards the front. That's the setup for our half Lord of Fishes. What we're going to do now, whether your legs are in seated spinal twist setup position or Lord of the Fishes, I want you to sit so tall, take that right arm and either press elbow against knee or I prefer to give it a hug and then look over that left shoulder. Just take that left hand behind your back. Really squeeze that left thigh in. Rotate around that left shoulder. Amazing stretch for the shoulder blades, the upper back. And probably we're feeling some stretch through the hips as well. Slow, deep breaths here. We're not rushing this. Sitting up so tall, wearing that crown on your head proudly. One more big inhale. Exhale, release the body. Help the legs separate. And again, I want you just to clear the canvas. If you need to jiggle your legs out a little bit, legs are just away from your mat. We're going to go through the same setup for the other side. Start nice and slow because remember, right and left are not necessarily equal. We take our left foot into butterfly and then just bring that knee so that it's pointing straight to the front. Taking that right leg up and across so the knee, foot is on the other side, the outside of the knee. And we try to bring that bum cheek down, keeping your left foot planted, or sorry, the left shoe back here, the right foot planted with your right knee pointing straight up to the ceiling. If this position is not working for you today, we'll take the left leg straight and that right knee can stay bent with the foot on the outside or perhaps on the inside. So we're sitting tall in seated spinal twist position, right knee bent, left leg straight, or left leg bent with your foot tucked under your bum, and that right foot is on the ground, knee to the ceiling. Try to get the bum cheek down. Sitting up so tall regardless of legs, everybody. Go ahead and give that right knee a hug, or press your elbow against it, whichever you prefer. Look over that right shoulder, sitting on both sides of your hips, Squeeze that right leg into the body. Sit so tall, shoulders back. As we look over that right arm. Slow, deep breaths. Sitting up so tall as we continue to twist. And releasing through the middle. Release those legs. We can straighten them out and then give them a jiggle. From here, what we're going to do is take ourselves all the way laying down on our mat. If you need socks, sweaters, any of those things, blankets, make yourself comfy. We have one final exercise we're going to do as we lay ourselves all the way down. Feel free to bring your knees into your chest. Taking our feet down to the ground. You'll either be coming into a bridge pose, a shoulder stand or plow. Lifting those hips up into bridge. You can take your hands interlacing them and open up the chest into a chest stretch. Or we can take our hands underneath the low back, fingers facing towards bum, coming up onto your elbows. If you're able to rest on your elbows, you have the option then of lifting one foot up off the ground, bringing the knees into your chest. Keep your elbows on the ground, your hands underneath your back to support you. Feel free to straighten your legs out and bring them straight up to the ceiling. And if you'd like to add the extra stretch, we're coming into plow, drawing those legs carefully with control behind the head. Perhaps you can bring your toes to the floor. What I want you to do is just keep your hands on your lower back to help protect. Keep your shoulders on the mat so that we're not just resting on our neck. Watch your breathing. And now whatever position we've ended up in, 
I want you to notice how this feels. And we'll all slowly get out of it. And we want to do this by reversing the movement exactly how we got into it. We can straighten those legs up to the ceiling. We can bend the knees into the chest. And then one foot comes down at a time, keeping your hands under your lower back before releasing the hands and slowly releasing the back down. And maybe even give those knees a nice big hug, rocking side to side. And now I did say that that was our last stretch. I'd like to do one more. We'll do a two pine spinal twist, bringing those legs all the way down when you're ready. Arms coming out to the side, making a T with the body. Let's inhale, lift our right knee up. Exhale, lower to the left. And we can just look over that right arm, noticing how we feel, any stretch across that right side. Inhale, lifting the knee up. Exhale, lowering down. Inhale, lift the left knee. Exhale, lower to the right. And look over that left arm. Now we're noticing anything along that left side. And lifting up, lowering down. Now at this point, our practice is concluded. We are simply resting. So for anyone who needs to leave, absolutely. This is your opportunity to slowly come out of your class. And for anyone who would like to stay with me for just a few more moments, we're finding Shavasana, that resting place where our, our arms and legs can be separated away from the body. Or if anyone would prefer, we can bring our arms heart and belly to again notice our breathing and our heart beating in our chest. Slowing down that breath as we let go of those muscles through the abdominal. Notice any muscle tension that perhaps was released during our practice. Those shoulders falling into the ground. Muscles in the face are soft. We notice our legs are open and relaxed as those hips have been released. Perhaps you're also noticing your lower back has peeled up off the ground as we have definitely loosened up through those low backs. Taking our final big breath, laying down. On that exhale, starting to release our fingers and our toes, little wiggles, maybe some circles through the wrists and ankles. We gently take our time, maybe gathering those knees into our chest one last time. And we can roll over through baby pose on our sides as we press ourselves up into our final seated position. Taking lotus or crisscross. As we get ready to say our final goodbye, we'll sit up oh so tall, taking those last couple of big breaths, working on our posture. Thank you so very much, everybody.